I heard about flame weeding a couple years ago from a fellow farmer, and I thought it sounded really intriguing, um, mainly because I love killing weeds, but also because it does a nice job in some problem areas that we have. Uh, mostly, I use it for stale seed beds, and on a certain crops, carrots, beets, slow germinating crops. And the other purpose I'm trying, and trying to develop the right tools to build the right tool to do the edges of plastic and the walkways in between rows of plastic, which is a very difficult area to cultivate. You can hoe it and hoe it and hoe it, and you just keep doing that all year, all year long. Um, it's, it's working out pretty well, although we have a really good crop of crabgrass and red purslane, and it takes a lot of heat to kill it, and the crabgrass especially comes right back. The tall, broadleaf weeds are easily killed. Pigweed, uh, lamb's quarters, all of those weeds are easily taken care of, and just to alleviate those weeds for us has been a great help. Uh, although I'd prefer if the crabgrass and the purslane didn't go to seed this year, I'm going to have to do some hand weeding in there, and hopefully in the future I'll put my plastic where there is no crabgrass or purslane. Uh, the two weeders I have are a tractor toolbar mounted one, which is used for the, the wide space in between the plastic, gets the bulk of it, the walkway, and this is quite a bit hotter because I'm running a 100 pound can. As you can see, it's a homemade tool. Um, the other weeder is a backpack mounted one, and my theory on that is to get up close to the edges of the plastic. And it's a fine line between burning plastic and killing weeds. But with proper speed and the proper angle and the proper distance from the ground and the flame adjustment, it's effective. Not on grasses, but on those broadleaf weeds we talked about. I'm burning only vapor. I've tried to get into the liquid burning. My local propane company got really scared when I talked about that. They tried to help us out a little bit, but they didn't. Once they realized what I was doing and saw this setup, they took their tanks away. And they, uh, So basically, if you're going to burn liquid, you're on your own. They'd be happy to come fill my vapor tanks anytime and sell me more fuel. But when you talk about liquid, it's, I believe you're on your own because of the liability. Another thing this backpack weeder is really handy for are those little problem areas. It could be where your spacing was wrong on your transplanter or you just your cultivator sweeps don't quite hit the very center of the walkway. There's an area like that here and uh, you can just walk and kill all those weeds without walking the rototiller or something slow or pulling, pulling them by hand. You can knock them down with this and you can hit basically anywhere in your farm as easily as you can throw in a backpack and take a walk. It doesn't take that long. You got to get the weeds when they're small, though, like anything else. My toolbar mount flamer needs quite a bit of work. Um, mainly, it's not hot enough because I'm burning vapor. I'm extracting so much vapor at a time, I get ice up, so my heat, my flame cools down with time. And that's the big thing I've got to do is go to a bigger tank and maybe use some smaller burners in a gang. Uh, the other big change needed on my toolbar flame weeder is the ground clearance problem. When, once your crop gets big. This has to, the fire has to be so close to the ground, I'm knocking blossoms off of peppers and bending the tomato plants. So I'm going to put a yoke toolbar and hopefully get a 250 to 300 gallon saddle tank and uh, give it a shot for next year. Vegetable farmers and their weed control machines. In this video, we visit nine vegetable farms in three New England states to talk with growers about their weed control equipment and how it's used. They will describe a variety of cultivation tools and approaches to weed control. Hopefully, their knowledge and experience will help you get a better understanding of cultivation equipment and techniques. Matching cultivation tools to the soils, crops, weeds, and other particulars of a farm can be a complex task. Growers that are trying to reduce or eliminate their reliance on herbicides need information that will help them make good decisions about cultivation and weed control. Extension, research, and the private sector working together can generate that kind of information. Funded in part by the USDA Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Program, promoting environmentally sound and economically viable agriculture. This video was produced by Vern Grubinger, University of Vermont Extension System, and Mary Jane Else, University of Massachusetts Agroecology Program.